Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome me, myself, back to this channel because I haven't posted anything on here in a while ever since we've walked away kind of from Resident Evil. And uh, they just had a conference today and they showed off some Resident Evil, you know, stuff. But ultimately I didn't really care because Silent Hill apparently is coming back. And I figured, you know, we kind of did do a horror thing on this channel and I kind of, you know, slipped away from it because... At this point, Resident Evil, outside the games and, and Village, I liked, but it was more action-based. It wasn't as scary as previous, like, 7 felt more scary. Um, but it's going back into that action direction. And so I'm kind of pulling back, and they're doing Resident Evil 4 Remake. And, and, I'm, and that's not one of my favorite Resident Evil games. So, And I haven't liked any of the movies or the shows, so I figure, why not shift? And let's leave Raccoon City for a while, and let's see if we can do 100 episodes about Silent Hill on this channel. So that's what we're going to do. And today we're going to start with this transmission that they had uh, a couple days ago where they talked about, uh, actually I think it was yesterday, <laughs> they just did this. And uh, and they talked about some new Silent Hill stuff that's coming out that I was really surprised about. In fact, I'm like mixed. I'm actually like in the middle on some of this news that was released. So we're going to start with one of the things I'm mixed on and then we'll do episodes about each thing that they talked about. So today we're going to talk about the Silent Hill 2 remake for the first episode of this show, um, which I still don't have a name for, so hopefully I figured it out before I upload it. Um, but then we're also going to talk about in the next episode, we'll talk about uh, Townfall, which is another game that's going to come out. And then we're going to talk about Ascension in the third episode. And then we'll talk a little bit about F, Silent Hill F, in the fourth episode. And then probably in the fifth episode, we'll get to what this show will ultimately be about kind of how I do the Venom vlog on the main channel, on my main channel, and we follow the production of the movies of Venom and stuff, but we also talk about comics and other things that tie into Venom merchandise. We're going to do the same thing here with Silent Hill, and we're going to talk about the Silent Hill movie, Return to Silent Hill, which apparently has the original director from the first movie back, which he nailed the look of the universe of Silent Hill for sure, but man, that story was awful in that first movie, and... Uh, and so, but we'll get into that in that episode. So in episode five, we'll start pretty much what this show will be about, which is following the production of that film. And uh, and then in between, talk about some of the Silent Hill games, some of the comic books, and we'll see if we can do 100 episodes of this of this show, uh, like we did with Resident Evil. So buckle in, hope you like uh, Silent Hill, because I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of this universe, and I kind of hated that it went away, because even some of the games that aren't really loved, like Silent Hill Homecoming and Downpour, I still enjoyed enough of it to keep playing them over and over. So, you know, I, I've, I've never, I think there's only been like a few Silent Hill things that I've actually hated. Um, but but the two movies are definitely <laughs> among them for sure. Uh, but uh, we'll see, you know, we'll, so we'll talk about movie stuff later. Right now I want to talk about Silent Hill 2, the remake video game that I'm, like I said, I'm mixed on this one, honestly, because Silent Hill 2 is such a great game the way it is with the way the voice acting is, with the way the music was, you know, or is, um, all the original content, the way lines were delivered, it gave this like very disconnected, apathetic feel to the world. And they kind of mirrored that a little bit with uh, Silent Hill for the Room, which is probably one of my favorite Silent Hill games. Um, I really dug that one a lot, um, but I also like Silent Hill 2 as well. And it's not that I don't love one and three, um, but to me, those are really neat bookends to the Silent Hill universe. You have the start of the Silent Hill evil spreading with Alyssa, you know, um, in the first one. And then, uh, and then, or, you know, young Heather, you know, whoever, you know, whatever identity she wants to go by. Um, but then you get into Silent Hill 3 and it's kind of like the conclusion in a way of that story with the cult and, and everything. But then when you get into Homecoming, it kind of brings a different sect of the cult and they live in a nearby city to Silent Hill and they have their own rituals that they screw up. And then that brings the evil back. Um, so maybe that's still all one timeline. But but I think what a lot of people like about Silent Hill is, is Silent Hill 2. Is that story where it's not really connected to anything other than now the evil of the town. And what it can do to a, a person who is broken or hiding secrets or, you know, horrible secrets. It can bring those secrets into reality and turn them into nightmares that you have to then confront. Um, I think that's, I think a lot of people kind of dig that. And that's why Silent Hill 2 is so popular because it's not like built in, there's not this ton of lore built into it or anything. It's just, hey, this guy gets a letter from his wife. He comes back to the city. 
to see if he can find her uh, because he thought she died three years prior. And why is he getting a letter or is it someone playing a prank on him? And he comes to this town and there's monsters and there's other things going on. And there's other people that have been pulled to the town, too, um, who are also going through their own, uh, you know, battles uh, internally and externally in some ways and uh, and facing their own demons. And I think that is such an, a neat concept for a lot of creators out there. So pretty much every Silent Hill after Silent Hill 3 has been based around that concept. Oh, it's a, it's a town that brings your worst nightmares to life and everything. And as much as there's people out there that don't like that, like hardcore fans, like maybe like Twin Perfect, who I really enjoyed their Silent Hill videos that they made, um, like amazing videos, very in-depth stuff, stuff that I never even realized. I mean, those guys are so smart dissecting that universe, but they also like, you know, they, they really love like the, the cult storyline and kind of what was set up and what was given to them. And I think a lot of people are like, ah, yeah, but two was so more accessible. And so, and that's so easy to just keep making stories like that, where just new people come to Silent Hill. It's like a slasher flick in a way. Uh, not exactly, obviously, but you know, you just want Freddy and Jason to come in and hack teenagers up. You don't really want to shake things up too much from that because that's kind of what you perceive this title to be, you know, or like what Freddy movies are, or what Jason movies are, or Michael Myers movies, you know, you kind of want it a certain way. And whenever you get something new or something outside of that, you kind of rail against it. And, but to me, Silent Hill started with cult stuff. And so as much as even I'm not a big fan of that, I still would have rather gotten a Silent Hill 1 remake uh, before 2. I mean, to me, I'm like, yeah, I know you're probably not going to do more with the cult because it seems very clearly after watching this transmission that they are just focusing on Silent Hill being, in a sense, alive in a way where it can infect anybody and, and make them, you know, bring them to the city uh, or to their town or it town, you know, itself, bring it to uh, Silent Hill and manifest these things on them or have the person manifest them themselves. And, uh, and that's kind of what some of the comic books have done and everything. And so, like I said, I think that's kind of become, whether you like it or not, that's become what Silent Hill is to a lot of people. And it's clear watching this transmission that they're like, hey, we're going to remake two, not one, <laughs> which I think is, again, an odd choice. Because uh, if they would have just remade two and called it Silent Hill colon something or like the movie, it's going to be called Return to Silent Hill. If you did something like that, maybe I would have accepted it a little bit more, but it's full on Silent Hill 2. And it's like, OK, well, why give us a remake of two before ever giving us a remake of one? And I guess it's because it's disconnected enough, like I said earlier, that you can just do two. And then now they're making a movie translation of two. And then all these stories uh, that sounds like that they talk about on Transmission, Ascension, Townfall, all sound like psychological horror. And then even Silent Hill F, which takes place in Japan in the 1960s, apparently. And that also is going to be psychological horror, but on the sense of like in the realm of Silent Hill 2 and the way they it's people dealing with their inner demons and stuff. So... As much as, you know, that story keeps getting retold in a lot of Silent Hill games, I would just like something new added to it. So I hope these companies that are doing that add something new to it. Um, and we'll talk more about those when we talk about those games. But for Silent Hill 2, it's like I almost feel like I don't want anything added to it because it's so perfectly put together the way it was. Um, it's just weird to get like the graphics look amazing don't get me wrong and, and bloober who was like making it i think they made layers of fear and stuff which i actually liked that game um it was fun to stream because I, it was a lot of jump scares and stuff so it was kept me really interactive with my my audience and stuff but uh but f for me this like as great as this game looks and as much as i've wanted a silent hill 2 remake so i can play because that remaster version they did of two and three was so bad it's so poorly made um and konami doesn't even let you stream it if you're trying to stream from your console so I don't even play them. So they just sit on my Xbox. I'm like, God, I love Silent Hill. And I have two games right here, two and three, two of my favorite Silent Hill games um, next to four. I love four also. Um, but uh, I don't even play them because uh, I just, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I, they don't let me stream them. <laughs> um, and we will do a little bit of a deep dive into Homecoming because I feel like Homecoming is a good game to fully dissect in between movie news uh, because Homecoming is not loved by pretty much any Silent Hill fan. Um and it's, and it's also like, to me though, I don't feel like it's worth the hate it gets on some level. Uh, there are some things in it that are certainly, you know, you can criticize all day. I criticize as well, but I think that's, that's such an important game in this franchise because it was the, the turning point, you know, after Silent Hill 4 was made, most of Team Silent, the original P3 
people that made the games, all of them were definitely gone at this point, except for Akira Yamaoka, who came back to do the score and the soundtrack for Silent Hill Homecoming. And he did a great job. I love the Homecoming soundtrack, actually. But uh, but the game itself, um, it, it just kind of did what a lot of people would just interpret it as, oh, it's just Silent Hill 2 again with just like a diff like a, in a different town and, and, you know, with different characters. But I think there's a little bit more to it than that. I actually don't think Silent Hill 2 is about James's nightmares coming to life. But actually, I think Silent Hill Homecoming is about Josh's nightmares coming to life, which makes it a lot more like Silent Hill 1, um, where you had, you know, the main, you had the little girl, you had, uh, you know, it wasn't Harry Mason's nightmares coming to reality. Um, it was his daughter's um, and her original form uh, having these nightmares that were creating these monsters. So that's what I kind of liked about Homecoming was that they, I was like, okay, it's, it's got a Silent Hill 2 type main character who's like disconnected and maybe disassociated in some way and going through a psychological break. But then you also blend in a young child who's tapped into this evil energy of, uh, of you know, this ritual that's gone bad and now it's infected his soul or whatever. And Josh is kind of manifesting because most of the monsters are based off of drawings that he did uh, when he was alive. So it's, it's really neat. So I think we'll explore Homecoming um, on some level. So I do have some footage of that, of me playing through that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. We're going to just dive into this universe but I guess we're going to dive into the psychological aspects of it. So there won't be a lot of cult talk about, you know, Silent Hill on this show, except for when we get into Homecoming. And then maybe I'll do an episode or two about Silent Hill 1 and 3, because I, I certainly want to pay respects to those. But it was very clear in this transmission thing they did today uh, or yesterday that it is all about, you know, a Silent Hill 2 approach. Like there are stories that they're going to that all these other games are going to tell from now on are going to be a lot like Silent Hill 2. I just hope they add little twists to it so it doesn't feel like we're getting the same story over and over. It's like, oh, it's starting off the same, but oh, okay, that's different. And now, you know, we're going in a different direction. I'd love to see something really unique like that. And one of the ones I think will do that is Townfall. So we'll talk about that next because that sounds like it's taken the Silent Hill 2 thing, but also expanding on it with more than one character. And then the main character or the person that's being talked to in the transmission sounds like they may not actually, they may know they're not a good person and that is different than what James went through and stuff and also different than the characters from Homecoming and Downpour went through because they all believe they were in the right. It sounds like we might get a character uh, that we get to play as or is uh, one of the main characters that we don't play as who knows they're not in the right. And I think that would be a cool twist to bring into that you know structure. So we'll talk about more of that in Townfall in the next episode, but let me know what you think of a Silent Hill 2 remake, you know, uh, Again, I'm, I'm divided. I feel like the game was fine the way it was. Uh, more than fine is near perfect, in my opinion. So to remake it with an all-new voice cast, even though they're doing motion capture, and they're kind of recreating it in the same way the first game, the first Silent Hill 2 was made. So that's great. They're going through all these lengths to pay that respect and, and do what they can. But I'm just, man, oh, man. It's, uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm wondering what they're going to do different to it to make it their own. Cause obviously this company is like, Hey, we want to remake two and we want to pay homage to it and, 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 and do it justice. But we also want to do something new with it. I'm curious to see what that new thing is, because if it doesn't work for the story, it could break, you know, it could make or break the game for at least me personally as someone who loves the Silent Hill story. Um, so let me know if you agree with that or not. Um, or if you're up for, cause I'm almost like, just, dude, don't call him James. Just make a whole new, you know, game. Who cares, you know? Uh, but at the same time, they've tried that before and it didn't go over well with fans. So maybe this is a good way to bring the more casual Silent Hill fans back to the franchise. Um, but And by launching all these different ty types of games with different, you know, uh, structures to them and, and different playabilities. And then also a movie. I think they're really pushing. And I got to say, I'm surprised by Konami. Uh, I really am. Um because nothing here looked or sounds terrible to me. I just am confused and I have mixed feelings about it, but I was so blown away that we're getting four games uh, probably over the course of the next two or three years and uh, we're going to get a movie. I just wasn't expecting that and a lot of merch. Like they have a lot of merch too. So um, I'll put a link to the merch store down below if you want to check that out and maybe we'll do an episode where we talk about some of that um, on episode six or seven or something coming up. So let me know what you think of Silent Hill 2 Remake and if you want to do a deeper discussion about Silent Hill 2, we can definitely do that in an upcoming episode. Just let me know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff and I'll see you in Silent Hill.
Peace.